Once upon a time, there was a software that goes by the name of Lightwave 3D, a dominant force in the CG industry, and one that was previously considered among the very best. However, fate eventually took the software in an unfortunate direction, one that wasn't expected at all, at least to those who weren't involved in the industry, and it almost went down the abyss of that software. But luckily that didn't happen, because recently, it has made a comeback with a brand new 2023 version. However, when it was absent or when it was on life support, there was an open source software that kept building a reputation for itself in the field. I am of course talking about Blender. And with the release of its version 4.0, the software looks more amazing than ever. But before we get into the comparison, first, what is Lightwave 3D? So, just like Blender, it is a 3D animation software that can be used for multiple tasks, such as modeling, animation, and rendering, with a rich history that goes back to the 1990s, when the two masterminds, Alan Hastings and Stuart Ferguson, developed the software in a company called NewTek. After years of success, where it was one of the most used in the VFX productions, like Star Trek and Titanic, Let's just say, it only went downhill after that, and a new software called Moto emerged from a team of developers that left the company. And now, in 2023, a new company called Lightweb Digital, run by Andrew Bishop from Darkside Studio, acquired it from Wizard earlier this year, which led to the release of a new version after two years of inactivity. But for more details about the history of Lightwave, you can check the video we created about it just recently. Now, in a nutshell, how do these couple of 3D software compare to each other? Let's start with modeling. While this is just a subjective analysis, I mean, it can be different from one person to another, I would have to give Blender the advantage here. Let me explain. Lightwave is divided into two separate programs, the modeler and the layout, and each one of them provides a dedicated workspace for that specific task. In terms of modeling, we have a user interface that is split into four screens, like other programs such as Max, so it has a 3D viewer and three other 2D viewers, which represent each side of the model. But this can be achieved in Blender too. Other than that, Blender heavily relies on shortcuts, and depending on who you ask, people either love or can stand shortcuts. Personally, I find them really helpful. And speaking of tools and features, they are relatively the same on both sides. They both support polymodeling, subdivision, and booleans, with only some specific differences. For example, the Quad Quadjoin tool of Lightwave, which you can use to merge vertices of multiple sections at their respective centers, in addition to other stuff, of course. Before we continue, do you want to create environments like these? If the answer is yes, then this course by Max Hay is the perfect pick for you. Throughout this training, you will learn how to build each of these environments from scratch, picking up along the way important concepts like composition, modeling, lighting, rendering, and so on. You can also check some of the stuff people created following the course. Another bonus for choosing this course is getting the full fantasy slash sci-fi asset pass, which is fantastic. And to check it out, you can click the link in the description down below. Now, in terms of sculpting, the 2023 update of Lightwave includes Chronosculpt, which was actually a standalone software back in the day, and at its core, it is a tool that can be used to edit both static and animated 3D models. So, in terms of static models, I think Blender is better, thanks to its bigger set of brushes and cleaner interface. The story is different, however, when it comes to animated models, because Chronosculpt takes special attention to how the model moves and changes shapes throughout the animation sequence, and it can be useful for fixing issues such as stretching or unnatural movements in animations, for characters or simulations. Speaking of character animation, Blender came a long way when it comes to that in recent years, but is it as good as Lightwave? 
Unfortunately, it is a no for me. There is a reason why Lightwave was industry standard for years, and there are many reasons why I think animating characters is better on it. But if I have to pick one reason, then I would say it is much easier to rig, animate, and edit bones using it. To edit any of the bones, all you need to do is open the side panel with everything being organized on it, such as the IK and modifiers on the side and controls of the bones on the other side. Instead of the chaos of having to go back and forth between vendor menus, but this is just my opinion. A new exciting feature that came in Lightwave 2023 is the introduction of procedural geometry nodes. Even though it is new in the software, I think it is pretty good. However, at the time being, it is limited to only 3D modeling, where you can combine these nodes to create all sorts of models and shapes, such as extrusion or boolean without having to do it manually. But when it comes to Blender, it can do the same things and more. But what I find fascinating is that on this 2023 release, it also received what they call the quality of life update which made the nodes work in a similar way to Blender, such as the ability to duplicate nodes or to group them into a compound node. The new version of Lightwave 2023 also includes the feature of directly creating dynamic text, which allows individual characters to be animated. However, when it comes to this, I have to be honest, Blender is on another league because on top of modeling, its geometry nodes fully support animation and motion graphics, as well as simulations. This includes anything you can imagine from effects, particles, and of course text animation, among many other things, which makes it better in many aspects. In addition, the new update of Lightwave brought Turbulence FD, a tool that has been acquired by Lightwave Digital and it is now included in the 2023 version. In a nutshell, it is a native voxel-based gaseous fluid dynamics system, if that makes sense. In other words, it is a tool that is commonly used to create fires, smoke, and other fluid simulations. The Blender alternative, on the other hand, is called Mentaflow, and well, it is good, but not as good as Turbulence FD, as it is known to be a groundbreaking and professional tool that has been used in the industry. Just to give you an example, it can simulate realistic fire shaders with a dynamic range of realistic colors, something that can be tricky to achieve in Blender. And this is just one example, because this is a topic that needs its own video. In addition to this, the particle system of the software that these simulations are based on is better than the one that comes with Blender simply because it has way more options to adjust the particles with. To give you a small example, we can choose to generate the particles based on speed, frame, wind, and so on. The two software also support rigid body, soft body, and other sorts of physics-based animations or simulations. And while each has its own advantages and weaknesses, we can't forget the Chronos Cult features that we talked about in the beginning of the video. So I have to give this round to Lightwave. In terms of rendering, they are both great, because each render engine has its own advantages and weaknesses, but one thing for sure is that they can both produce excellent results. Blender, as we all know, has the iconic Cycles render engine, in addition to Eevee, which is a real-time render engine. And with the introduction of Blender 4, we now have access to light linking, which is a way to make light affect only the objects we choose on our scene. Lightwave, on the other hand, has a global illumination render engine and a radiosity render engine. These weren't updated in the 2023 release, but instead the same ones from 2020. However, they are still really good and they can produce stunning results. Not to mention that there are also a lot of third-party render engines that can work with both of them, such as V-Ray, Octane, Redshift, and so on. Another thing that we need to talk about, and a key factor that can define them as an industry standard software, is how well they work with other 3D programs in the field. 
Lightwave being a former leader in the field of VFX and TV has a solid compatibility with industry tools. For example, you can export Lightwave projects to Nuke or with the Unreal Engine 5 bridge. In addition to the ability to work with other industry standard formats that professionals use in the VFX and animation industry. Blender on the other hand is still working on that, with the implementation of USD, Alembic and the addition of Hydra support in the recent Blender 4, which means that Blender is going in the right direction to become an industry standard software and become more popular in game development, VFX, animation and other industries. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you have something to add, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.